How's everybody doing? Welcome to the J. Aruga Show, the first conservative podcast in the Philippines. Our next guest is a Catholic speaker, a podcaster, a content creator in various platforms, and a bookworm, and more importantly, a religious hippie. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Amber Rose. Amber Thanks for accepting my invite. I know you're busy. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. This is great. How's everything on your side of the planet? You know, we just got a lot of snow <laughs> and I'm really not happy about the really? snow. snow. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah okay. a lot of it. And it's almost March. And even though mm. we tend to get snow well into April, I'm just, I'm in denial. Mm. <laughs> so, so are you on the, the northern part or is that so where i'm snow? in illinois which is like mm -hmm. kind of almost in the middle of the united states kind mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. um so it's we get less snow than some places like michigan but we get more snow than places like texas so mm -hmm. yeah. i prefer to be in texas right now i'm not gonna lie <laughs> <laughs> i know there's an ongoing culture war in the u.s yeah. How hard is it to live the faith in there? You know, it's there's like two sides of it. I think because mm. of the fact that we have social media now and it's easier to reach like-minded people, mm. there's there's that connection. But then there's also with social media comes the outsourcing of actual community. And so instead mm. of, you know, going out and actually being able to find people, because we're kind of all scattered now. If you think like oh, almost a hundred yeah. years ago. Mm -hmm. Catholics were all in one town. Your neighbor was mm. Catholic. The guy at the bakery was Catholic. Your butcher was Catholic. Mm -hmm. But now trying to find Catholics is really difficult, not just because they're not open and, you know, in the world and like trying to live out their faith as best they can. They've kind of been silenced um, here at least. And it's really hard to find certain Catholics that are really willing to live their lives outside of the church, not just inside. Um, and so the culture war is interesting because, you know, there's so many things that Catholics can do to help society. And yet we feel like we're powerless because of all of the bad things that are happening. Mm -hmm. But, um, personally for me, I've, I haven't really experienced any quote unquote hate. Um, uh -huh. but uh -huh. I definitely have experienced people being irritated at me or something. And, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's really depends on where you go to. What although yeah, although, although the claim is we're the ones who are hateful. Yeah, the, we're the uh, ones that aren't tolerant. <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned Catholics used to be like in one place. I heard before that California is the big Catholic state. Really? Before, before yeah, they they have their the names of this the cities are named after saints. Oh, San yeah. Diego. Uh, San Jose Sacram Maria Escrava. Yes, mm, Sacramento yeah. for Sacrament, yeah. San Francisco. So they used to be the Catholic state, but now they're really deep blue. Yeah, it's yeah. really sad. Uh, this morning, I, I looked at uh, the Daily Wire for news, yeah. and there's a headline that says, Kansas Senate passes uh, first bill defining woman as a biological female, and at first you'd you'd be happy to read that, right. but then then you realize the world that we're living in right now it it needs a bill to be passed to define the word woman. So it's so sad. Yeah, here, here in the Philippines, just to let you know, we're we're a, a bit behind. It's okay on the, tre on the trend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, which is good. Yeah, because yeah, because it means we're behind, like, uh, with the woke ideologies as well. The problem is people here don't seem to take the lessons of the West as learnings, mm. and we seem eager to commit all the mistakes that you guys are making there. Yeah, England's the same way, to be honest. Like the UK. Mm. Um, basically if something starts in the United States, you guys will probably get it in two to three years. Yeah. And right yeah. now we have, um, the transgender, um, what is it? It's transgender. Mm -hmm. 
like birth rights, basically. So it's like <laughs> or reproductive rights. That's what it mm-hmm, is. Mm-hmm. So what rights do transgender people have to reproduce basically? And how can mm-hmm. they do that through like IVF and, oh, it's so sad and like <laughs> surrogates and things. And it's really messed up. I feel so bad for these kids. Oh yeah. Uh, y- you'll get into trouble by talking about these things in um, there, right? Not really. I mean, I mean, yeah, t- to an extent, I don't really talk about this stuff so much on social media as I do mm. on like my podcasts. Mm. Podcasts are really re- where I really go um, kind of more in depth to certain things because my podcast can't really get canceled by, you know, Facebook <laughs> or Instagram or YouTube. Whereas I've already kind of been on the chopping block for a lot of things, especially when I got mm. banned permanently from TikTok. That was a huge thing, which I was always honestly grateful for, not complaining at all for that. Mm -hmm. But I definitely know that there's certain things you can talk about on a podcast that you can't talk about, you know, on social media. Mm -hmm. Okay, Uh, let's begin by talking about your origin story, the Mm -hmm. early beginnings of the religious (laughs) hippie. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Were were you always religious and were you always a hippie before? Yeah, I've always had a very crunchy lifestyle, so to speak. <laughs> That's what we call it, which is very like crunchy. holistic and earthy, you know. Uh, okay, um, okay. We really relied a lot on like herbal medicines and homeopathic care and chiropractor stuff. And so for us, that's what I was grown up with. And I was always raised Catholic. Mm-hmm. Um, we were created Catholics and I wasn't baptized in the traditional Latin mass, but I had my first Holy Communion and I was confirmed in the Latin mass. And um, from there, you know, we were very devout, very Catholic. And then, you know, the sex scandals kind of happened in 2011. And so many people were affected by that, um, you know, and didn't really know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. And my family being one of those people, we just kind of were like, okay, regroup, like, what do we do? And so we left Um, for about eight years, you know, I kind of just wandered i was like i don't know didn't really like mass anyways it was pretty Mm. boring couldn't text my friends what's Mm. the point and so i ended up wandering around for about eight years i really struggled with a lot i struggled with mental health i struggled with like eating disorders and just a lot of problems that you know are running rampant still today you know so many young Mm. people are Mm. still still really struggling with these things and i was looking to the world to basically fill that for me And so Mm -hmm. I went through this period of life of for eight years where I had really bad friends. I had anxiety, depression. Um, And eventually when I was about 18 or 19, I remember just being in such a slump, you know, it was, Uh uh, it was just one of the worst probably weeks of my life. I was getting bullied really badly online and there was just a lot going on that was out of my control, Mm -hmm. but I felt like I I just, I couldn't deal with. And so I realized that that day it was Sunday and I knew I had like so much to do that day. I had like a presentation. I had like stuff to do. Mm -hmm. And I realized that on Sunday, like we used to go to church. And so Mm -hmm. just randomly for no reason, it seems at all, I decided to just go to church that day. Uh So so this is your turning point, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That would basically be my turning point where I was like, yeah, this is this is fine. (laughs) And it's funny because when you're raised like in the faith, you, you keep those things with you. So I still knew what to do, but, um, I I know. I I know. Uh, Yeah. Before you continue your story, I I just want to tell you that I can relate to your story because I used to be an atheist. I fell away from the faith. And for many years as an atheist, my turning point was in, college and i was buying this I, I was buying pieces of paper from a school supply store and there there there's some sort of an honesty system in this store you, you give let's say one peso and one peso can can buy you four pieces of paper mm-hmm. uh, so but i took five pieces of paper uh-huh. <laughs> so when i got back to school i freaked out because i was i i, I thought i was able to steal without my conscience bugging me. So that's when I realized there's something wrong in the atheist worldview because if there's no God, 
every crime that is well thought of and undetected would go unpunished. So that's right. my own turning point. Anyway, continuing with your story, after that Mass on that fateful day, so how did it go? Yeah, I know. And I totally know what you mean. The conscience thing is such an mm. important thing that we forget about because it's God's imprint on our hearts. You know, our mm-hmm. conscience is such a gift that keeps us out of trouble and developing a good conscience is very difficult in today's society when they tell you everything that's wrong is good and everything that's good is bad. Mm. Um, oh, so I told yeah. yeah. Like, Moral oh yeah, transgenderism and all these things. <laughs> yeah, all of that stuff totally fine, you know, but God and religion, no, that's awful, you know, so totally get that. Um, But yeah, so I went to church and I kind of sat in the back. I knew that, well, I felt, I guess that I didn't belong (laughs) there. I thought that people were judging me. I thought they knew that I'd been away for eight weeks. I just, I felt like everything that I'd done in eight years just kind of came crashing down on me in a form of judgment. And I just could not stop thinking about it, you know, about, how much um, I messed up over the years, et cetera. And then during consecration, the priest lifted Jesus, you know, consecrated host and yep. the Eucharist. And it just felt like time kind of stopped. And Jesus was asking me, he's like, do you trust me? And mm. I was like, hang on. Oh, God, is that you? Hello? <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't know because I hadn't experienced anything like that before. And so I was like taken aback for a second. I was like, wait. Hello. Mm. <laughs> um, and he basically kept asking, he's like, do you trust me? Do you trust me? And I didn't say yes. I kind of wanted to, there was that little inclination where I was just like, well, I want to, but no, you know, I'm going to stay <laughs> set in my ways. I'm not going to trust you because I went through this and that, and you allowed mm. it to happen. And you're the reason that all of this happened. And mm. you allowed me to go through this suffering. Mm. And he just kept asking, like, do you trust me? Do you trust me? And he was basically taking like a chisel and a pick and just like chiseling away at my heart. And eventually I said, yes. Mm. And after that, the rest is history. I, um, Mm. I started turning my life around, uh, a couple days later and just kind of slowly starting to take those baby steps to follow Christ. Okay. And that's the religious part. So the hippie part, <laughs> you, you mentioned <laughs> yeah. a, a while ago, you're, you guys are into uh, herbs and yeah. all this stuff. Okay. Yeah, we make our own selves. We, uh, we drink tea and stuff because we understand that the medical system likes to make money off of you being sick. Uh-huh. So that doesn't mean we don't deny certain things that they do. It just means that if we can heal our bodies naturally, the way that we were meant to heal them for over 2000 years, then um, we usually take that route as opposed mm-hmm. and it works. Mm-hmm. Like I've had a flu and I've gotten over it in like two days because, you know, I've taken good herbs mm-hmm. and we grow our own mm-hmm. herbs and uh-huh. um, yeah, it's just really fun. So yeah, the hippie part of it, people don't see that often because uh-huh. I think it's becoming uh-huh. more popular in the United States now, mm-hmm. but um, originally it wasn't. Yeah. Because hippie is uh, sometimes uh, related to something that's, Mm, not like liberal yeah liberalism yeah in the 60s or early 70s so and I, I dress think... like that but not all the time <laughs> <laughs> okay so so from your return to faith there's also the journey to becoming a catholic speaker and then a catholic influencer in social media what brought you to that direction Yeah, it was an accident. (laughs) I'm going to be honest. People always ask me, they're like, how did you get started? How did you decide that Mm. this is what you wanted to do? And I'm like, I didn't. I didn't do it. God (laughs) did. I just Mm. basically Mm. did what he wanted me to do. And it sounds funny because they're like, well, you made these decisions. And I'm like, not really. Um, And so what do I mean by that? Right. So Mm. I was on TikTok. That's kind of where I started off. And I posted a video. It was Mm. a really dumb video, really bad quality. (laughs) It was about Chick-fil-A and my rosary and my church at the time. It was just really dumb. Um, But I ended up getting thousands of views and hundreds of thousands of followers, not hundreds of thousands, hundreds. (laughs) What's your secret? How how did that happen? We don't know, right? There was no (laughs) hashtags. There was no (laughs) reason for it to happen. Um, But it did. And like overnight, I gained like 500 followers. And I was Mm. like, whoa, okay. And it kept going. And eventually it was Mm -hmm. 1,000 and then 2,000 and then 3,000 and then 50,000 and then 100,000. And 
I was just like, this is interesting. So I ended up branching off onto Instagram and I started a YouTube channel. And then two years ago, I started a podcast. Um, Mm. But the thing was, is that I never asked for any of it. It all kind of just fell into my lap, so to Mm. speak. I didn't go out seeking to start a podcast. I didn't go out seeking, you know, to start a YouTube channel or anything like that. They all just kind of fell into place where Mm. when I was on TikTok, people were like, Hey, we really love this content, but you know, could you make longer videos about it? And TikTok Mm. really only offers 60 second videos. Now I think it's like three, I don't know what it is. now. Three minutes, I think, (laughs) but you mentioned you're, you're out of TikTok TikTok now. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know what's going on there. (laughs) Um, thank God though, because that was awful. Um, (laughs) but (laughs) it was just one of those things where, you know, I was like, well, what if I started a YouTube channel? Is that something you guys would want? You know, it's not like Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to start a YouTube channel because I'm going to talk about this. People would ask for certain things. And after a lot of people would ask me like, Hey, could we have longer videos? I'd be like, well, I don't know how to do that since TikTok doesn't offer that as an option. But if you guys want, I can do a YouTube video. Like I can start a channel and they were like, yeah, yeah, do that. That's great. Let's go. You're very demanding. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I try to give them what they want due to the fact that it's what they need, you know, for the ah, most okay, part, okay. because if people need longer videos, then they're more interested in something. And if I'm their source for information on Catholicism, then I'm going to try to give them as much as I possibly can. Um, because I'm responsible for that now, you know, as a mm. Catholic uh, communicator. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's kind of how it started and how it's going. (laughs) I mean, still till this day, like things fall into my lap and I'm like, God, is this what you want or not? You know? And then he'll Mm -hmm. open the doors ways if it's something he wants me to pursue. And if not, something usually falls through, you know, either Mm -hmm. they cancel or, you know, something falls through and I'm like, okay, you know, onto the next thing then. At least he's very quick about it. He'll let me know like right away. He'll be like, yeah, (laughs) this is not it, sweetie. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so, so it seems like there's a lot of prayer involved uh, from the beginning up until now. And it seems like your goal before shifted to to like just releasing a video and people seem to like, hey, release more. <laughs> and so and now it's full on evangelization. Yes. We're so. actually a NFP now, a non for profit officially. We got um we got incorporated on January mm. 30th, I believe. Ooh, so wow. yeah. So now we're just waiting on the uh, couple things, but it's it's a process, you know, and it's all through God's work because I would not know what to do without <laughs> without mm. his, you know, without his guidance. And yeah, yeah. But prayer is a huge part of it, you know. Without it, mm. I don't think I would have anything. And I'm sure this is regularly asked. Uh, do you get your regular share of bashers of course oh, yeah. what what's oh, your yeah. rule when it comes to bashers how do you engage them or, yes. or not engage them yeah i mean it's you know i'm human i think that's the hard part that i kind of have to keep mm. reminding myself and that people mm. kind of forget i think a lot of people put catholics on this pedestal to be perfect and we mm. never claim to be perfect but i think it's just something that people expect of us even though you know we don't claim it And so there's a lot of people that expect me to be something I'm not. Um, I have a lot of people that pick on me for whether it's how I say something, the way I look, the way I do my videos, the way that I say something, you know, it's, there is no limit to something a person will nitpick <laughs> at. And the way that I like to process it, and I didn't always process it this way. I used to actually get really beaten down by the negative comments. I used to read them all and kind of engulf myself in them and be like, okay, you know, this is penance. <laughs> it was not penance. It was really bad for my mental health. So <laughs> what I do now, and my spiritual director has helped me with this so much is I view that person who's giving me hate as somebody that God wants me to pray for. Because if that person is showing up on my comment section or something, I view it almost as a cry for help because something Mm -hmm. else is going on in their life that they're unable to cope with. And so they take it out on somebody else. Now, whether that's Mm -hmm. accurate or not, I don't know. It just helps me keep going throughout the day and feel sorry for them a little bit. (laughs) That's a Um, good suggestion. Yeah. But it can be hard. It is. I my spiritual director uh, told me to to 
to think of it as a scourging. Yeah. <laughs> so so those those negative comments sometimes it, it, it's like uh, Christ being scourged at the pillar, but uh, offer it up to the Lord. And, right. And I, I I hear another tip to to pray for them, like you said, because our Lady of Fatima said to pray for. I don't want to assume they're sinners, but the Our Lady Fatima said, "Pray for those who, people who who you think no one prays for because right. uh, they they go to hell because no one prays for them." Right, so, and it's usually sins of the flesh that are the most common, and you know mm. it's really sad because as Catholics and Christians as a whole, we should be praying for the conversion of sinners, and I think. Nowadays, it's kind of seen as taboo because mm. if you pray for somebody, you're forcing your religion down their throat. And mm. a lot of Catholics and, you know, Protestants and Orthodox people that I've met and I've witnessed and things, they almost use prayer as um, an insult now. They're like, well, I'm going to pray for you because mm. you're wrong. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah, Instead yeah. of just like, calming down and being like, you know what, I'm going to pray for this person, but not telling them, okay. not using it as like a weapon, you know, and being like, of well, course, I'm going to yeah. pray for you because <laughs> bid, 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 bid. <laughs> and I mean, like I used to do that. I was like, well, you're wrong. So I'm going to pray for you. Mm. Um, mm. And it's like, we weaponize prayer instead of using it to heal and love, like what it's meant to do, you know? Yes. Yes. And Jesus told us to not like, show everyone that you're praying yeah. if, you, if you're praying for someone just keep it private right just pray for them just, just nobody needs them. to just, know just do it <laughs> yeah and also i think because people want a reaction they'll tell people they'll be like well i'm praying for you and then they'll get a reaction out of it or they expect mm. some kind of praise or something uh, and you know that it's lent right now and mm. it's something that you know jesus told his disciples about the pharisees you know do not you know, the Pharisees, they look as though they're fasting, you know, they want mm. praise, they want recognition for the things that they do. But for us, we should wash our face and our hair and we should comb and, you know, yes. really take care of our appearance. So it doesn't appear that we're fasting. The same goes for prayer, right. you know, right. Right. Um, we can, but that doesn't mean we should expect anything for it. You know, mm. we shouldn't expect mm. praise or a reaction or anything. We should just do it because we can. Right. I, I have another question. As a Catholic content creator, how do you make sure that the time you spend on social media is just the right amount spent on social media? Because my fear in using too much social media is not the addiction of it. Uh, and we're talking about like uh, losing control. And, and, and there's the thin line of doing these things uh for myself uh my thin line is doing these things for vanity mm -hmm. instead of the true goal which is to evangelize through my podcast so the downside of having that paranoia is i feel that i should be posting on social media more than what i'm doing now so mm -hmm. how do you find that balance yeah, I guess it really helps because I hate social media, so I don't want to be on it to begin with. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but I'm on it because you know it helps so many people. But mm -hmm. it's really easy for me to just be like, post. All right, that's it. I'm done. I'm good. You know, it's oh, almost okay. like a reward to get off social media for me. It's like uh -huh. I'll do it, uh -huh. and then I'll be like, oh, that's done. Great. Okay, moving on to the oh, next okay. thing. But I mean, being a, I remember being in high school and being a teenager and, and mm. being really engulfed in the social media world and wanting to post just to prove to people that I was doing something with my life and I was, you know, better than them in some ways. Mm. And I, I can, I can definitely see some of that creep into my ministry over the years, not so much last year, but the first two years of my ministry when I was doing that. I really wanted to show people that I was doing better than them, especially mm. the people that had hurt um, my past friends. And, you know, it, it's one of those things where you really have to set limits for yourself, whether it's with app timers or, 
Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, I use a lot of app timers, actually, now that I think about it. So maybe <laughs> that helps too. Maybe it's just a habit now. But mm. app timers really help. And then also remembering that you're doing it for God, especially yes. if it's like mm. Catholic content. Because mm. I think a lot of the time we start on social media. Social media is very um, egotistical. You know, it's all about yeah, me yeah. and this is the best side yeah. of me. And it's very uh, visual, very egotistical. Yeah. It's yeah. all about me, me, me. And so when you start something for God, but then mm. social media twists it because you get all of these compliments and you're getting all of this, you know, um, I guess chemical in the brain was that dopamine? The dopamine, yeah. The dopamine. Yeah, the dopamine rush or whatever, because you're getting yeah. all these compliments. And so posting more equals better comments and better likes. And it's just this cycle of getting sucked into social media. Um, and so it's something that I found is when I post, I just post and I don't look at the comments. Um, it's very rare that I will look at comments. And I know that kind of is mm -hmm. annoying to a lot of my followers because <laughs> they want they, they want, want to talk to with me. Yeah. 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 And, you know, sometimes I will if I feel like it's really, really important or, uh -huh. um, you know, something. But if people are like nitpicking what I say, I never respond to that. Um, but if it's like a good question, I usually will respond. But the best way to reach mm. me is email, because I feel like if people are really serious about a question or serious about Catholicism, they will write me an email. Mm. Whereas it's so easy to just post a comment and then like dip off, you know, oh, kind yeah. of thing. Like they're yeah. just like, all right, bye. They're not really serious. <laughs> and that's why so many haters get uh, so much traction is because they just comment a ton, you know, mm. but they're not actually serious in Catholicism because they don't take it the step further to actually research Catholicism at all. Um, mm. They kind of just want to poke fun, you know? So mm. I don't know what the question was, but hopefully that answered <laughs> it. <laughs> you did, you did. And I, I took some great tips from you just post it and and maybe let the lord do the do his thing and also i think it's important that like something that i think i even struggle with today is when a post doesn't get a lot of likes mm. or something like that i'm like really tempted to take it down but <laughs> you know what even if it helped like here's the thing 80 likes on social media doesn't seem like a lot but if mm. 80 people were in this room right now being like i like this I would be uh, overwhelmed, you know, because uh, yeah. 80 people is a lot. 80 likes, course, yeah, not a lot. Yeah. 80 people, though, that's a lot. That's a that's a good perspective. Yeah, th thanks Even for sharing. Even if it helped that. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good that's a good perspective. I, I would hard, like to say I, I would like to say that I love your Matt Frad interview. In Thank Pines you with Aquinas. That's how I learned about you. And oh wow, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, how great. was it? How, how how did it how how did it start? Yeah, so it started in um, I want to say um June or July. Mm -hmm. I went to a conference in Soka uh, in Colorado called Soka, mm -hmm. and I talked I talked to there, and Matt Frad reached out to me on email, and he was like, "Hey, I saw your stuff. I really really like it. Did you want to come on the podcast?" And I was like yeah like <laughs> okay like it's Matt Fred, sure <laughs> like why not <laughs> right and um and so he was like oh get in touch with my uh manager and she'll schedule everything mm -hmm. so we did we scheduled it all out um and we were supposed to have it in we were supposed to have it at the end of June, July yeah mm -hmm. we were supposed to have it at the end of July Unfortunately, though, my dog ended up needing emergency surgery mm. and she needed 24 hour care. And I know people say, oh, it's just a dog, but she really needed help. And so I asked Matt Fred, I'm like, hey, could we postpone this until September? And mm. Matt was like, yeah, absolutely. Like, it's no big deal. So it also gave me more time to plan because it was, you know, July would have been just a month to plan. It gave me a couple months, you know. And so when September mm. rolled around, Chloe, my best friend and I, we packed up the car and took an eight hour car trip all the way to Steubenville, Ohio. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. uh, it was just really a great experience. We got to meet Matt Frad. We got to meet Neil, who is his um, film person, kind of like video yeah. guy. Mm -hmm. And we just had a really great conversation. I will say though, there was no alcohol in the pints. <laughs> I was kind of disappointed. It was espresso and water, but <laughs> okay it was also 8 a.m so <laughs> ah it's too early 
Who are the other Catholic personalities that you love to watch and listen to? Mm, or basically yeah. any other channel that you enjoy spending your time on watching? I watch... Oh, I watch a lot. I watch <laughs> a lot of... Um, you know, I like Father Mike Schmitz. He's a big one, um, mm -hmm. of course. I think that's just normal. Everybody loves Father Mike. I also really like um, a... What is it called? I think she's called um, A Catholic Mom's Life. Mm -hmm. um, her name's Heather. She's really great. I'm not a mom, but I love her kids. And like, she's really mm -hmm. sweet. Yeah. I've talked to her. I talked to her a couple of times. Um, I really like uh, Ascension Presents, all of their stuff with like Jackie and Bobby and things. I really like um, EWTN. Like there's mm -hmm. just so much. Oh, I also love Father Ripperger. Like mm -hmm. he's an exorcist. I'm sure you're probably uh, familiar with him. Maybe I love father Ripperger. He is just so good. I love him. Uh, uh, but yeah, I watch so many. It's hard to keep track. Actually, <laughs> How about on the conservative side? Do you listen to like podcast? Like, yeah, I, I, the I, Daily I Wire. Uh, yeah, uh, I love the daily wire. It's great. Candace Owens is really awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, Charlie Kirk, I don't listen to as much, but uh, I sometimes come across his stuff and it's really good. Uh, John, yeah, I listen to John Doyle a lot. We're friends. John Doyle's mm -hmm. really great. And outside of that, I don't really listen to much news or like politics, but The Daily Wire is really fun. I like The Daily yes. Wire a lot. Yes. Okay, so I, I see you're a bookworm yourself. You have a book you club. Tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell us more about this book club. Uh. Yeah, so the book club was really fun. This was kind of like our trial season. Um, it's officially ended for this season, but we're going to bring it back in the fall because it's more mm. of like a fall kind of winter type thing. So it's going to be more seasonal. So we're hoping to bring it back um, kind of in the fall or winter of this year. And we read a bunch of great books. Anything from Diary of an American Exorcist, which I actually uh -huh. have right here by um, Stephen J. Rossetti. And, um, gosh, we read so many books. We read light and leaven by Bishop Strickland. We read fighting for life by Lila Rose. We read the screw tape letters by, you know, it, it's just, Lewis, so yeah. Many great, oh yeah. So many amazing books. And I wish it could have gone longer, you know? Um, mm -hmm. but as you know, summer picks up and everything, everyone's getting super busy. And so, or spring, I guess, technically, um, but it was great for community as well. You know, everybody made really lifelong friends there. We had like discussions and it was just really overall a great time. I think I was a little nervous kind of starting it out because I'm like, I am not qualified to do any of this, but <laughs> as time went on and I realized that these people aren't asking for perfection, they just want community and they want to be a part of something. And I was able to give them that, you know, and I, I even got that for myself when I was with them because when you're in a community like that, even though it's online, you're still learning from each other and you're expanding your knowledge and appreciating one another and, and what they have to offer. You know, everybody's a little bit different. And we had everyone from, you know, ages mm -hmm. 16 to probably like in their sixties, like there was just so many <laughs> age ranges and everybody participated and offered like their own advice and walks of life for us. Wow. And the young people were just so enthusiastic. I had at least six wow. or seven regulars that would come in and we would just like hang out right before the the thing and just like talk, you know, and uh -huh. it was just like really a great experience and I'd love to bring it back. Before we end this conversation, let's play a quick game. I I'll give a okay. topic, then you'll tell me your book recommendation for this topic. Okay. And I'll try to give my own as well. Okay. okay. So let's... uh. Mary. So what's your book recommendation if someone wants to learn about Mary? I would say St. Louis de Montfort's um, True Devotion to Mary. Fantastic okay. book. So mine is really not about Mary, but I love this <laughs> book, Anti-Mary Exposed. I love that by book. By Carrie Guess. And it, it, it just like uh, talks about the anti-Mary movement, which is radical feminism. And th there are some tidbits about Mary in there that are not, you cannot read in other books. Yeah. So like, uh, like the Guadalupe is 
the image that's most uh, printed around the world. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how about pro life issues? You just mentioned uh, Lila Rose book. Is Fighting for Life by Lila Rose. But if you really want to know about the pro life movement and how to get involved in things, I really suggest Persuasive Pro Life. I think it's by Trent Horn or he yes, forwarded yes. it or something. Such a good book. No, no, book. it's about. Uh, it's by Trent Horn. Yeah. It's oh, it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Persuasive it's pro just, life. Yeah. So, so important, especially because he gives you actual scenarios and how to react to them. And we should always react out of love and respect. And we should never instantly judge somebody who's either gotten an abortion or wants to because you never mm. know their situation. And it just defeats all of the choice arguments. And it's just really fantastic book. Nice. And I heard his releasing a post Roe v. Wade edition really? of the book. Yeah, because there will be Excited. new conversation post Roe v. Wade. So BRB going to Google this after this podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, my my suggestion for pro-life issues, uh, unplanned, I think. It, it's narrative mm. by, by Abby Johnson. It's so a good. narrative book. Uh, but you still, you, you, it, it has heart. So that's what I love about that book. I love uh, that. How about church history? Uh, do you have book recommendations on church history? Or I have is, is so many. <laughs> trying to pick one. Oh gosh, I, would, I, I, I don't know I'll be it's... first. Okay, I'll, I'll okay, be first. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Carl Keating released a book. It's an easy read. Uh, Ten fifty four and all that. A light hearted <laughs> history of the Catholic Church. So it's an easy read if you just awesome. want to learn quick about church history just gonna write that down <laughs> i love books 1054 um, and all of that and all that perfect yes, yes. yes. love books that, that's how you love books <laughs> you yeah. write down <laughs> book recommendations people suggest things to me and i'm like wait i need paper <laughs> i gotta write this down <laughs> so, so for church books. history what's your uh yeah suggestion I don't know if it necessarily is church history per se. I like reading a lot of the early church fathers, especially the ah, okay. works of Bonaventure. Bonaventure. Mm -hmm. um, but I would definitely say I like Why We're Catholic by... Um, Trent, actually, Trent Horn that again, one's by yeah. Trent Horn too. Yeah. Horn again, yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, oh, I'm Trent Horn fan. <laughs> have yeah, me on oh, podcast, Trent. I, I, have, <laughs> I have all his books in, oh, yeah? in, in Kindle at least because that's the fastest way to, to get books. Yeah. Uh, how about the uh, Catholic social teachings? Catholic social teachings. Ooh, I haven't read too many books on mm. that one. Actually, now that I think about it, I mm. yeah, I haven't read too many books on that. Oh, okay. I should so, though. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and here's another book by Trent Horn and Lila Miller. Layla Miller oh, made this okay. way. So that's my. Uh... Oh, I have heard of that book. Yeah. You know, I've read so many. Maybe I just don't know that I. Maybe you read, read one. it, but you don't know. You uh, never how know. About, uh, how about God's Existence, a book about God's existence? Ooh, I have a really good one for that one. I forget the name of it, but it's like right here. Hang on one second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like right. Yes. It's called A Walk with Jesus. Ah, uh, okay, okay. And it's just like really, really good because it kind of, or that one, or I would say like, you know, um, St. Augustine's The Five Reasons to Know God or something like that. Um, mm. I just really love those books because they go in depth into, you know, who Christ is or even like Jesus and the Jewish roots of the Eucharist. Like that's a really good one too. I mm. have so many. I mm. <laughs> And for me, another Trent Horn book, of course, Answering Atheism. <laughs> Trent I love Horn Trent is, Horn. Trent Horn has been on this podcast, by the way. Oh, really? Uh, oh, my yes, gosh. That's yes. so awesome. Was, I'm going to have to email him and be like, hey, what about me? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so, so last category, common objections to the Catholic faith. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I really like the... Um, Essential Catholic Survival Guide by Catholic Answers. Oh, or yeah, yeah. Meeting yeah, the right. Protestant Challenge by Catholic Answers yes, because yes. it gives you all the arguments against Catholicism and then tells you why they're wrong and how mm -hmm. to um, kind of push back against these heresies and, um, you know, accusations. Mm -hmm. Nice. 
Uh, mine is uh, reasons reasons to believe by Scott Han. Mm-hmm. So, so that's a good that's one. my suggestion. Yeah. Hey Amber, we've come to the end of the episode. I'd like to thank you for everything that you do. Thank keep, you. Keep it up. You're an inspiration to us. My, my goal here is to inspire more people who are Catholic to do what you do, what we do, to spread the good news and probably reverse the tides of the culture. It's frustrating yeah. to see sometimes that, like, while they, they say while the truth is still tying its shoelace, the lie has already circled the globe four times. So, so wow, yeah, we, it's so true. We need more, especially the young ones yes. here in the Philippines to to do what you do. Please well, invite thank you the so much. yeah, <laughs> please invite the audience to your work and where can we oh, follow yeah. you on social media? Yeah, you can uh, you can go to my official website at thereligioushippie.com or you can follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all at the religious hippie. Um, and you can also follow my podcast, which is A Catholic's Perspective. All right. Thanks, Amber Rose. Thank please, you. Please pray for us here in the Philippines. I will. Thank you so much. Okay. This has been another episode of the J. Ruga Show. At the end of the day, it will be night. Goodbye. Hi. This is Jay Aruga of the Jay Aruga Show. If you like what you just saw, please consider subscribing and smash that like button. We'll need all of your help to take back the culture from this ideological politicization of the West. Thank you. <laughs>